This is technically the second day of distributed property and combining like terms. Today, we're going to do the same thing as what we did in the last class, which is distributed property and combining like terms. But uh, the only new thing that we're going to throw in there is that we're going to distribute fractions. We're going to apply distributed property where we have to distribute fractions. So to get comfortable with that, I'd like you to copy down this uh, class opener right here. We're just going to practice multiplying fractions which we've already done in this class, it's really easy. Um, it's difficult when you add or subtract fractions, but multiplying fractions is really easy. You simply multiply the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom, and then you reduce, or you could reduce first and then multiply. So I'll give you guys a couple of seconds. I'm gonna pause it right here. A couple of minutes to copy this down, but it'll only be a couple of seconds on video. So hopefully you already copied these down. Number one, uh, we need to remember that multiplying a fraction with a term is really easy. Uh, you could put the term over one, and then you simply multiply the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom, and you're done, right? So up here, one times three, that is three. And of course, two times one, that is going to be a two. And don't forget that you had an X right here, so you have to put the X right there. And that's it. That's your answer right? Number two, we have a fraction times a term. Again, same thing. You could put it over one and you could multiply the top with the top. Or before that, how about this? A negative times a negative equals what? A positive. So you know your answer is going to be positive. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, and we could say the top of the top two times six. What is two times six? Twelve. And on the bottom, uh, three times one. What's three times one? It's three. And of course, we have an X there, so we're going to put an X here. And then after that, you're, you could reduce, right? 12 divided by three, that's four. Yeah, so the actual final answer is 4X. Now, this was done by, dis by multiplying first and then reducing, but you could have reduced first here. What do I mean by reduce first? You have a six up on top divided by three on the bottom. So if you wanted to, we already have the answer. We already know the answer is 4x. But if you wanted to, you could have said six divided by three and gotten a two right there. And then what we have left is simply a negative two, no more two thirds, that got canceled out. Negative two times negative two with an x. Negative two times negative two x, that's positive four x. So you could have reduced first and then multiplied and got that answer. Or you could have multiplied top with top, bottom with bottom, and then reduced and got that answer. It's totally up to you. I do find it beneficial to reduce first at times. So I recommend that if possible. So right here, uh, obviously, uh, when you multiply this fraction times negative two and you put that over one, you can't really reduce two over five. There's nothing else to do. Um, so, whoops, that's ugly. So we're gonna multiply the top with the top, bottom with the bottom four times Four times uh, two is eight, and five times one is five. And let's not forget that this is a positive number times a negative number. So a positive times a negative equals a negative. And let's not forget about the X that's gonna be there on your answer, okay? Moving on to number four. Oh, what? Number four, we have five six times 18 X. Now, we're going to put the 18 over 1, and then you could multiply top with top, bottom with bottom, and then reduce, or you could reduce first, then multiply. What do you guys want to do? Reduce first is a lot easier. I don't want to multiply 5 times 18. That's going to be a huge number, and then divide it by 6. It's going to take a long time. It's a lot easier to reduce. 18 on top, 6 on the bottom. 18 is divisible by 6, so 18 divided by 6, that'll be a 3 up on top instead of an 18. And then 5 times 3 with an x, 5 times 3x is 15x. And to be honest with you guys, once you do these so many times, you're going to start being able to do this in your head. Like, the reality is 5, 6 is really 5 divided by 6. So there's actually a division of 6 right here. And if 18 is divisible by 6, you could do that in your head and get the 3, and then 5 times 3 in your head is a 15x. Like, for example, this 3 fourths is really saying a oh, negative 3 divided by 4. There's a division of 4 right here. If this is divisible by 4, you could actually do it in your head. 8 divided by 4, what is that? 
2, and then 2 times a negative 3, it's going to be a negative 6 with an x. It might be a little too much to do in our heads right now, but as you do these over and over and over, I think you'll build that skill where you could see that it's divisible by 4, 8 divided by 4 is 2, and then you could multiply. But we could multiply top with top, bottom with bottom, then reduce, or we could reduce first, which is the 8 divided by 4, and then multiply. I recommend reducing first, 8 divided by 4 is 2, and then multiplying negative 3 times 2x. What's negative 3 times 2x? Negative 6x. Over here, number 6, it's saying negative 4 divided by 7. So if you think about that, the, the fraction over 7 means divided by 7. Is this divisible by 7? Yes, it is. 14 divided by 7 is what? 2. So you really have a 2x in here. Do it in your head. 2x times negative 4x, or negative times negative is positive. 2 times 4 is 8 with an x. 8x is the answer. We just did that in our heads, but let's not do it in our heads. Let's show our work. Put the 14 over 1. Now you could say 4 times 14, get a huge number. 7 times 1, get 7. Divide that huge number by 7, and you'll get your answer. Uh, or you could divide first. You could reduce first, then multiply. So 14 over 7, 14 divided by 7 is 2. And yes, it's still a negative, negative 2x. So what we really have here is negative 4 times negative 2 with an x. Negative 4 times negative 2x is positive 8x. All right, number 7 and 8, last couple of ones. Could anybody do this in their heads? Could anybody tell me the answer to that? Yeah, what is it? Wait, okay. 21. Good job. Okay, so again, huh? Yeah. Um, check it out. Check it out, guys. This says 7 divided by 8, right? That's, that's divided by 8. Is this divisible by 8? Yeah, what's 24 divided by 8? 3. And what's 7 times 3? 21. Yeah, so we just did it in our heads. The answer is 21. But let's show our work here. Let's show our work. Put the 24 over 1. And if you wanted to, you could say 7 times 24, get a huge number. 8 times 1, get 8. And you could take that huge number, divide it by 8, and it will be 21. But instead of multiplying first, then dividing, let's divide first and then multiply, right? I could say 24 on top, divided by 8 on the bottom. That is 3. And now multiply 7 times 3. And there's nothing to multiply on the bottom, 1 times 1, which is 1. So our, our answer is 21, because 7 times 3 is 21 okay so hopefully after doing these so many times you could now look at this problem and be like i could do this in my head the answer is what 49 good the answer is 49 what what okay again if it's too much to do in your head actually i don't even want to do in your head but if you could it's nice but uh if you put 63 over one and i don't know about you i don't want to multiply seven times 63 that's gonna be a huge number i probably need to calculate it, right it's a lot easier to recognize that 63 on top divided by 9 on the bottom. What's 63 divided by 9? 7. So that's really a 7. And what do we have now? Well, the 9's gone. It's just a regular 7 times 7 over 1. That's a regular 7. 7 times 7? 49. There's our answer. Okay? Now, that's not always going to happen where you get nice answers like this. Like on the first one. Or is it over here? And we actually got a fraction as an answer. You weren't able to re you weren't able to cancel or reduce at the end. It's just top with top, bottom with bottom. You get a fraction as an answer. Anyway, I think uh, this class opener right here is going to build the skills to be able to make distributed property of fractions a lot easier. Let's check it out. This is the worksheet, the back side of the worksheet that I gave you on Friday. Um, so let's take a look at it. And we have some distributed property problems on the first part that actually have fractions in them, okay? Now, I know some of us could do this in our heads, but let's actually work it out, show our work on paper. Again, we're gonna distribute three-fifths, three-fifths times 5x. Let's show our work, three-fifths times 5x. And put that 5x over one, and I'm going, to, I'm going to show my work in a little bit, but I know I need to distribute 3 fifths to both, to the 5x and to the 10. So let me show my work over here also. 3 fifths times, uh, times 10. 
and I know I'm going to put the 10 over 1 as well. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. 3 fifths times 5x, there it is, my work. 3 fifths times 10, there it is, my work. Now let me actually show my work how I multiply 3 fifths times 5x. I could multiply top with top, bottom with bottom, then reduce, or I could reduce first, then multiply. What do you guys want to do? Reduce first, then multiply? Sure. The 5 over 5 cancels out. So what I really have left is 3 times x, or 3 times 1x, that is 3x. And over here, I could multiply 3 times 10, get 30, 5 times 1, get 5, and 30 over 5 is 6. Or I could divide first, reduce first, then multiply. For example, 10 on top divided by 5 on the bottom is 2. And of course, 3 times 2 is 6. And that is a positive 6. So there's my answer. There's our answer for number 5. So the distribution of... A fraction, the distribution of the multiplication of a fraction is not that bad when you show your work. That is the final answer because you cannot combine 3x with 6. Uh, they would have to be like terms in order for you to combine them. So uh, let's take a look at, and of course we have some easy ones. Like what's the answer they're going to be? Positive 27x, positive 33, right? I mean, even on these, you could show your work. You could say, okay, negative 3 times negative 9x, right? Negative 3 times negative 9x. I don't do that. I do this in my head. You could also say, show your work like negative 3 times negative 11. But again, I do this work in my head. But if you want to write it out, you could. But you're going to get 27x plus 33 as a final answer anyway. Okay? So um, with fractions, it's very important that you show your work because... Not all of us could multiply fractions in our heads. Um, let's try number three, probably one of the more challenging ones on this first section. So showing our work, we're going to take the two-thirds and multiply it by 6x. So let's actually write that two-thirds times 6x. And then we're going to distribute two-thirds times negative 5. So that's two-thirds times the negative 5. But I want to put that negative 5 over 1, just like I want to put that 6x over 1. And now I'm going to actually multiply those fractions. On this first multiplication problem, I could go top with top, bottom with bottom, and then reduce, or I could reduce the 6 and the 3 first, and then multiply. I'm going to reduce 6 divided by 3 is 2. So what we really have here is 2 times 2x. 2 times 2x is 4x. And over here, I can't reduce 5 and 3, so I'm forced to actually multiply the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. 2 times 5 is 10, 3 times 1 is 3, and a positive 2 thirds times a negative 5, that's going to be a negative. So there's going to be a minus sign right here. And there's nothing else I could do for that problem. That's my answer, 4x minus 10 thirds. So, once you get really good, uh, we're going to notice that multiplying by half is really just dividing by 2. Because this, this means divided by 2, right? So if I say 40 times half, that's really, what's 40 divided by 2? It's 20. If I say what's uh, 10 times half, that's 5. If I say what's uh, 6 times half, that's 3. So, when you have even numbers in here, and it's one half out here, it's pretty easy because you are able to divide those by two and you could probably do this in your head. If I said uh, one half times two, that's going to be one x, but a negative times a positive is a negative. So it's going to be a negative one x, and then a negative times a negative is a positive, and half of six is three. So negative one x plus three is the final answer. I just did that in my head. However, you could show your work. We are showing our work. We're going to circle the negative one half, multiply it times two x. Showing our work, it's negative one half times 2x. Put that 2x over 1. Then we have negative 1 half times negative 6. So that's negative 1 half times negative 6. Put that negative 6 over 1. And on these multiplication problems, you could multiply top with top, bottom with bottom, then reduce, or you could reduce first and then multiply. I'm going to go with reducing first and multiply. 2 on top and 2 on the bottom completely cancel out. So what you really have left is a negative 1 times x. 
negative 1 times x is a negative 1x, or just negative x. And then over here, the 6 and the 2, 6 on top divided by 2 on the bottom, that'll be a 3 left over up on top. And what you have here is a negative 1 times a negative 3, that is a positive 3. And there's our answer, negative x plus 3, or negative 1x plus 3. So that's the only new thing that we're doing today, uh, distributed property with fractions. Now we still have stuff that we covered the past class, which is, uh, we have co uh, combining like terms. Let's just do one of these super easy. Uh, we're going to combine the letters with the letters, the numbers with the numbers, apples with apples, oranges with oranges. In this case, 9z combined with negative 3z. It's just a review from the last time we did this. Uh, if you have 9 and you owe 3, you're going to have 6. 6 of what? 6 of those z's. And then, I'm not going to circle anymore because I don't want everything circled. That doesn't make sense. I'm going to switch to squiggly underline maybe. I have a positive 4 and a negative 10. That's like me having $4 and me owing $10. I'm going to still owe $6. So there's my answer, um, and in this middle section, it is multiple choice, so that is uh, option C right there. And at the bottom, just like the last time we did this, we have a combination of distributed property and combining like terms. And whenever you're faced with both distributed property and combining like terms, you better distribute first because that's multiplication, and then combine, which is addition and subtraction. So if we look at number 13, for example, um, we're going to distribute first negative 2 times 3x, that's negative 6x, negative 2 times negative 7, that's positive 14, then we're going to bring down the plus 5x. And then we combine like terms afterwards, we combine the negative 6x, you know what, I'm going to circle, and the positive 5x. So if you owe 6 and you have 5, you're still going to owe one of those x's, and what about the plus 14, just bring that down. And you don't even need the 1 in front of the x. You could just say negative x plus 14. And that's your answer there. So this worksheet is here for you to practice. Um, the solutions are found in Google Classroom. There's even a video of where I explain how to do these in Google Classroom. Um, you know what? I think I, I made a mistake on one of the questions on the videos. I think it was like number 14. On number 14... We're supposed to distribute first, so let's do that one. So we're going to distribute the, ne the negative one-third. Negative one-third times 3x. Let's write it out. Negative one-third times 3x. And now let's do negative one-third times 6. Negative one-third times 6. And we're going to put the 3x over 1 and the 6 over 1. And you could multiply first, then reduce, or you could reduce first, then multiply. I'm going to reduce first and multiply. 3 divided by 3 cancels out. So what I really have here is a negative 1 times x. That is a negative 1x. And then over here, the 6 over 3, uh, we're going to reduce. 6 divided by 3 is 2. What do I have left? A negative 1 times 2. That is a negative 2. Now, I think on the video, I said, there's your answer. I forgot to bring this down. That 2x has to come down in front of it, and you now have three terms that you could combine like terms, right? You could combine this one and this one, not that one. So you could combine x's with x's, so you would still have to combine 2x, take away 1x, which will leave you 1x at the end with a minus 2. So 1x minus 2, or you could just say x minus 2. That's your final answer for number 14. I'm not sure if this is the one I messed up on the video, but there is one on the video that I messed up. I forgot to bring down that first term and continue combining like terms. Anyways, uh, let's work on this. The answers are on Google Classroom. And uh, will this go into your gradebook? Maybe. Probably not. What does go into your gradebook? All practice quizzes and practice tests, right? So there is a practice quiz available to you right now. So yeah, this is good practice. That's great. I recommend doing it and checking your answers on Google Classroom. But there's a practice quiz that will for sure go into your grade as a homework grade. So please make sure you do that practice quiz.